The motor's broken in, boys, and you know what that means. We're about to fly. I've been riding her steady for about a week straight since Saturday when I built her, and today is Saturday. Every single day I've rode her besides one because of the weather. That bike handles the weather just fine. And today, I've been ripping. I've been ripping on this thing full throttle, all the way from the bottom, all the way up, and boys, she flies. She seriously flies. I am so proud of her. We're on about a little less than a quarter tank of gas. The tire, unfortunately, has a slow leak. Man, check this out. I thought it was my valve. It is not my valve. I thought it was my needle because the needle is crooked. It was not the needle. I replaced the needle. I did not replace the valve. But when I was going through this bike, man, and I wish I had a photo or video of it when I had it. But anyways, I patched it on the outside with some rubber silicone. You can kind of see a little chunk left over there. But anyways, there was a shard of glass, you know, a little tiny little thing, about like that, slipped into this tire and it is causing it to slow leak. So I put some liquid rubber silicone on the outside here. And sometime this week, next week, I'm gonna take a patch and I'm gonna open up this wheel again throw a patch up on the inside because these tires are new you guys know this but other than that she holds air for about a day and that's pretty good <laughs> considering that it's a leak and I just fill it up but boys she rips this bike absolutely rips now I got the motor safely broken in I am confident letting it go and I want to do some numbers I want to go on the ride with y'all and show you that this bike rips yeah, because honestly, really, when I had this bike built last year, you guys seen the build process, all the stuff I did to it to get it where it's at right now, but I never really filmed content with it. I did a tire review video on these Michelin tires, but that's about it. I didn't do any numbers. I didn't do any modification lists. And this bike has plenty more to go with the CVT being bone stock. The numbers that it hits is crazy because there is nothing done to that CVT and the gears are still stock and it pulls these numbers. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, yeah, I really wanna get some focus on this bike because I didn't give it too much focus last year. So without saying anything more, let's hit the streets. The speedometer is broken on this bike as well, so we won't be able to see anything on here. But I have a GPS verified app that I use, so we're gonna use that down to the decimal point. And uh, as you guys see, yeah, she's thirsty. This bike drinks gas like nothing else, man. In one day, if I'm out riding for a few hours, I'm gonna say like two hours of ride time, gone. It is what it is. She wasn't built to be, you know, practical, but uh, we might have to get gas. We're about to hit the streets. All right, she's at 158 right now, climbing up. We're gonna shut her down. And we are at my favorite testing route. This road here is so smooth, so long, and it's right when you get into the country, little to no traffic and it goes straight down a whole mile. A mile straight, there's no uphill, there's no downhill. It's pretty much level and it's real nice, real good. But why I do this is I've noticed that when I shut it off and let the temperature drop back down, it seems to like increase compression or something. You get your motor a little bit more cool and it seems to make more power. I'm not verifying this, I can't say for sure, but that's what it seems like. So I'm gonna let it drop back down for a little bit we're going to flip this switch on and use this last bit of gas. Because look at this. See how fast this bike? It drains gas so fast. But uh, yeah, I'm pumped up, man. Let's get it. I just want to say real quick that this is not a long ride at all. From the storage unit to over here, it's only about two miles straight down that road. And it drank that much gas already. <laughs> it kind of sucks a little bit, but it's kind of cool too. All right, she's dropping back down about 150 right now. I'm actually nervous that I'm going to run out of gas at the end of this road. Good thing there's a gas station. We're starting her up right now. We're just going to give a full throttle. We're going to wait for these cars to go, get over to this road, and let her eat. Let's do this right now. All right. And here we go.
All right, that was solid, super solid. This this motor revs high, real high, and I love that so much. The gas station is right over there. We're about to go fill up. She's running good. We made it. Is that thing out of gas over there or what? One sitting by the park? No, no. Don't no, I was just road? cooling the motor down. I was doing my top speed runs on this bike. Oh. But she is definitely sucked dry. <laughs> I thought I'd seen it sitting there earlier today. That yeah, that's my road. That's my road to go and just let her eat full rip. It's gotcha. smooth, it's flat, it's open. My testing ground, so to speak. I felt bad because I came, that was a while ago, that was earlier today, and I just went by there, and there's still somebody there at that park. <laughs> I'm like, man, I feel bad. I could have stopped and asked if I needed help. Yeah, I wasn't there all day. That's just my fun spot. All right, boys, made it. 93 all day. So the process I have for this is I always use 93. Higher octane in these bikes, some of them are mandated. I always use 93. It cleans burner. It produces more detonation. It's better for your bike, two stroke or four stroke. I'm looking at the price here and it's 448 per gallon. So I got 449 to get exactly one gallon of gas. Cause this tank only holds one gallon. So get her in there. So we're gonna keep going, but not overfill it. We're looking for that magic number. Boom, 449, perfect. So I get the gallon of gas in there, right? Then I get my two stroke smoke juice and the ratio I use and I recommend using is 32 to one. I use a 32 to one ratio and this cap is tight, man. So over here, you'll see the one gallon mark. The one, one and a half and two. And I got one gallon of gas. So I'm looking for the 32 mark, which is right there. And I have exactly enough oil left for this. Thank God. So we get it up there. Some people run 36 and I did last year, but I'm thinking that that led the needle bearing failure actually I don't want to do that again. And it runs fine with 32. So I get it right up there. We're sitting right at 32. So I grab it. And I'll pour it up in there. It's a process, but it's kind of a fun process. I enjoy doing this. If people know, they know. They'll approach me at the gas station and be like, oh, two-stroke pre-mix, huh? And it's kind of fun. It always opens up conversation like earlier. Dude thought I was stranded. I wasn't stranded. <laughs> That's my testing ground. I go there all the time to test that. But I get every drop, man. I don't want to sacrifice anything. I don't sit here forever, but you know, I like to make sure. So I let her dribble in there. One more. Boom, okay. I carry this rag with me because there's a lot of excess left over and I clean the rim, stuff it in there. And I actually have some left, but I'm gonna go get some more of this. It's only like nine bucks for this whole thing, so it's pretty cool. Put it in my backpack. And then I give her a good shakedown. Literally just like this. <laughs> I'm mixing that oil and the gas together. Mix, 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 mix. Get it nice and mixed up. good to go. <laughs> Two stroke process. Love it or hate it. I think it's kind of fun. Alright, we're gonna head to one more location just to see if the numbers differ, you know. I was going from west to east, so I'm gonna try to go from north to south and south to north. The wind, any little factor like that. So there's one more road across town. I'm gonna keep filming in case some interesting stuff happens, but it's gonna be fun getting there. Lights are coming on too, sun's going down. We got the day to still live, boys. I realize the camera's pointing slightly upwards. I still got tape on my chest with this phone, but I'm making do with what I got, man. Whoa. 
Welcome back to downtown Monroe. Old ass town. General Custer was from here. Horrible man, but this is where he was from and he's idolized here. There's a statue downtown even of him. But it's a pretty cool town. I really like small towns because everything is accessible. Everybody knows everybody. And if you're friendly enough, that's a good thing. It's a pretty little town. But yeah, this bike is not too good at low speeds. She is happy at wide open throttle all the time. <laughs> People told me that pod filters will cause that on your bike when you have it jetted high too. But it is what it is. I like being full throttle anyways. Cool. I don't like seeing the police. I got no tags on this bike. I don't give a <laughs> I'm supposed to have a registration sticker, but that never pans out. All right, boys, here it is. One long ass straight road all the way down. Now I'm gonna do this one for me. What I mean by that is I'm gonna use my GPS app to track that speed. I wanna get the exact decimal point and see if this road makes a difference. So I'm gonna go off camera for this one. Well, let's see what she's got. You know, the thing about this bike too, is it has never reached more than 260. The highest this bike has ever been in the middle of summer after a top speed pull was 260 after shutting it off too. This bike stays pretty cool because your numbers jump up. These are those numbers jumping up I was talking about, but it's a cool running bike. I like that about her. Cops are out here deep though, man. All right, here we go. We're about to send it straight on down. Let's do it. Here's that damn hole I was talking about. It popped up. There it is, it fed through. So that kind of sucks. That means I'm gonna have to take the tire off the rim, chip the paint on the outside of this again and have to repaint it just to get a patch on the inside of this. That silicone rubber's wearing off with the road, but damn, man. It holds air, but only for like a day and then it's gone. So it's kind of frustrating. Ugh. I'm just letting her catch a breath and cool down. The numbers drop pretty quickly, actually, so that's pretty good. But after top speed runs, and I've done runs on this bike today, I let her cool down and catch breath, you know? So after she cools down, we're gonna head back across town. I'm not gonna film it because it's running low in daylight. We're getting close to the end, so we'll get there. We're back at the garage. The sun is going down, this bike is cooling down, but what did we hit? So today I did three runs, three GPS verified runs from about five, six mile an hour, full throttle, all the way up for a while, about a mile. So the first run, and it's in increments, man, it's crazy, was 58 miles per hour flat, 58. Now that's a little disappointing to be honest. But then on the second run, I went and looked at the speed, 58.5. So we're climbing up here, right? Making progress. Now on the last and final run, the one where I let her eat for a minute, where I was praying the motor didn't blow up, but I'm sitting here, crouched down under my bike. 59.9, 59.9, man. <laughs> so come on, like this close, you know what I'm saying? This bike's ultimate high time speed was 60.7 miles per hour. Right? And that was last season. And I was so proud of that. I was so pumped up. But we hit 59.9 today. One decimal point. You know how it goes. Tire pressure, wind, elevation. There's all sorts of little factors that determine one mile per hour on these scooters. But nonetheless, I am still super proud. Super proud of this girl. She is back, she is running strong, the motor is broken in and it is running great. And this is running these numbers with just a built motor. Only a built motor, nothing done to the CVT, stock gears, and this bike is hitting 60 miles, it's 60 miles per hour, just right there. But this bike still has work to be done. This bike is capable, definitely capable of variator, a clutch, clutch springs, a thicker belt, some shims, 
gears, top gears are going to be a big, big difference on this bike. These are the things that are gonna push it over to the limit. Hear me say this, my goal for this bike, my top speed goal for this bike is 70 miles per hour. That's my achievement. That's what I want. I know she can do it, because there's still, that CVT is gonna unlock this bike, that's the thing. And I know it can. So there's definitely still room to go, but I'm proud of it. Really proud of this bike. Thank you guys so much for watching this build. This build has been the most love I've ever put into anything. I love this bike. I love my Tao Tao, she's still back there chilling. I got plans for her too, some real fun plans to get it really dialed in and tuned. But this bike will be here, I will be here, Tao Tao will be here. Thank you guys for watching again. This YouTube channel is growing and it is growing quickly. And I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching this channel. I never made this channel for subscribers and for views and stuff. I just do what I do and I love to film the process and share it with people. But there is a lot of growth recently and I am thankful, real thankful. I have a surprise coming up for you guys and I'm really happy about it. But to wrap everything up, the bike is running good. Both bikes are running good. The weather is here. I'm here. Till next time, guys. Oh, shit.